Ciani, and I'd like to give you a little bit of information about myself before we start with the presentation. Um, for the first 26 years of my career, I was a teacher and a department chair um, in CTE and Family and Consumer Sciences in the Scotia Glenville Central School District, which is a suburban school district um, in the Albany area. Um, most of the time that I was teaching at Scotia, I was also um, working summers and um, school vacations at the state education department on projects that um, needed to be done, particularly in the family and consumer sciences area. So I worked on home and career skills, the middle level curriculum in the first version. I worked on the second version. Um, and the project we're going to talk about today actually started out as the third version of home and career skills. Um, after Scotia, um, for the past 12 years, I worked at the State Education Department on the Career and Technical Education team um, as an associate, um, Family and Consumer Sciences being my um, initial responsibility, but by the time I finished at State Ed, um, everyone there is working on all areas of CTE, so um, that's what I was doing as well. And this past July, I retired from State Ed and I joined the Technical Assistance Center as a consultant, um, primarily to work on the project that we're going to talk about today. So that's a little bit of background. Um, CTE has been my career and middle level CTE has been my passion. So I'm very excited to share this information with you. So for today, we're going to spend our time on two major topics. Um, the first one is um, the update to Commissioner's Regulation 100.4, that's middle level regulation, as it impacts career and technical education instruction. Uh, we'll look at what the current regulation is, and we're going to talk a little bit about um, the teachers who are certified to um, present the instruction that is appropriate for the new regulation. Then the second part of the presentation is, gonna, is going to be about um, the curricular guidance project that it, we're working on as a field now, um, the working titles Introduction to CTE, and it is the new curricular uh, framework for middle level career and technical education. Um, it was one of the promises made by the commissioner to the field that if this regulation change happened, there'd be uh, materials for schools to use so that they'd be able to implement it with um, the intent of the regulation change in mind. So that'll be the second part of our presentation. I always like to start with um, a little bit about basics, you know, just reminders so that we're all understanding what career and technical education is before we talk about, you know, what it looks like in a particular part of the um, education span. So on the, the left side of your your screen, you see the definition of career and technical education. It is in regulation in 100.1, um, and it reminds us that it is in kindergarten through adult area of study. Um, there's supposed to be a connection between academic content and technical content in the career and technical subjects and the Career Development Occupational Learning Standards in New York State serve as a framework for all CTE instruction. The reason I point out the definition is first so that everyone knows that that CTE is um, defined in regulation. It's not, you know, maybe it's this, maybe it's that. It actually has a definition that we adhere to. Um, but also because the definition emphasizes the fact that um, CTE is supposed to be a continuum of a learning that starts in the earliest days in kindergarten um, where CTE concepts are presented by the classroom teacher, you know, community helpers and um, children in the classroom having particular jobs that they need to accomplish to help the class run, that sort of thing. Continue through middle school where we have our first formal introduction to CTE with um, teachers who are specialists in the field, and then continue on into high school and post-secondary with a little bit more focused study um, in a particular CTE content area. So that's the definition. On the right side of the screen, we see the content areas that in New York State are included under the career and technical education definition, the CTE umbrella. And those are agricultural education, business and marketing, family and consumer sciences, health sciences, technology education, and trade and technical education. And I just want to spend a second on health 
sciences. Sometimes that's a confusing one. Um, we have health education teachers who um, are responsible for instruction, you know, 20 weeks in the middle school, 20 weeks in the high school before um, students graduate, health educators. They are a different set of teachers than um, the teachers that are health sciences teachers. Health, health sciences teachers are not only certified New York State teachers, but they also hold licensure in one of the health sciences um, um, careers. For example, they're registered nurses who are also teachers, or they're EMTs who are also teachers. And their instruction in CTE is, you know, specific to those um, concepts that help students become licensed professionals in those health fields. We typically see them in high schools only. But anyway, <laughs> that is hard. These are the CTE um, content areas that are included under the CTE umbrella. The regulation change that we're going to look at is um, a step towards strengthening the middle level span of the CTE continuum. You remember that CTE is supposed to be an instructional and a learning continuum. This regulation change is about what happens in middle level. So what does it look like? The current regulation, and this is current as of um, September 28th. Um, the regions actually voted um, this regulation into uh, permanent status in at their September 11th meeting, and the regulation change happened as of September 28th. The current regulation says that all students um, in middle school are entitled to one and three-fourths unit of career and technical education. Now, some of you may know that the prior regulation, prior to September, the regulation said one unit of technology education and three-fourths unit of home and career skills, which is um, middle-level family and consumer sciences. Um, the old regu regulation was very specific about um, introducing students um, to just two of those six CTE content areas. The Board of Regents, the Commissioner, our senior, the senior deputies at, at SED um, heard concerns from superintendents of schools from across the state that the prior regulation was um, causing many challenges for them in their schools and challenges to them for them to be compliant with regulation. Um, one problem was they weren't able to find the appropriately certified teacher for tech ed or for home and career skills if they had a, retire, a retirement in their school district. Just not a lot of, of those teachers available and districts were um, unable many times to find a teacher, which, you know, then they had a decision to make, you know, either not offer that instruction that students were supposed to have or use a teacher who wasn't appropriately certified for that instruction to try to get the instruction to the students. So one of the challenge areas in the prior regulation was the teacher's situation. Another challenge was the um, scheduling of those two discrete sort of mini courses in CTE in the middle school schedule. Um, middle school master schedule is very tight um, and there was really not a lot of flexibility for um, the presentation of those two content areas. And the third big challenge area was that only two out of the six CTE content areas were um, things that students were exposed to in middle school. Um, and some uh, school leaders were concerned that um, there was a relevance issue, that the kinds of things that were happening in those classrooms were um, not as uh, timely and relevant as they would like them to be. And so, and so they brought to the commissioner and the Board of Regents um, these concerns which um, led to the regulation change that we have now. So rather than a discrete unit of technology and a three-fourths unit of home and career skills, the current regulation language is one and three-fourths unit career in tech. Um, just as before, instruction can begin as early as grade five, but in schools where um, middle school instruction starts in grades five or grade six, grades five or six, um, you have to have the appropriately certified teacher and you have to meet the time requirements. 
Okay, so if you're considering your fifth and sixth graders to be middle school students, you have to follow middle school regulation. This regulation also allows teachers certified in any of the CTE content areas, so six content areas that we looked on in the previous slide. Any teacher certified in any of those CTE content areas is a potential teacher for middle school instruction now. Um, this year, this school year, the 17-18 school year is a transition year for this regulation change. Um, for 17-18, there's limited implementation, which um, looks like this. Only schools who had an opening for uh, technology or family and consumer sciences teacher in their middle school for the 17-18 school year were able to look to the broader pool of CTE teachers to fill that uh, opening. And that brings up questions lots of times. Um, well, if you, if you hired someone from the broader pool of CTE teachers, um, then, you know, how would they be able to teach technology or home and career skills? Well, that was the, the PS of that decision. Um, if the school decided to hire a teacher who was not a tech ed or a home and career skills teacher, then those schools were also um, making the decision to develop curriculum in time for the 17-18 school year that was appropriate to the certification of the teacher they hired. So it, it wasn't that they were going to, you know, hire the health sciences teacher and put them in the traditional tech ed classroom. I, one of our health sciences teachers said, yeah, if that ever happened, all they'd be teaching was bandaging because they've not, you know, they don't have the expertise to, to teach a traditional uh, tech ed program. So. Um, Although the pool is open for those schools, they had to also, you know, think about what their curriculum was going to be prior to the development of the new curricular guidance piece, which is another one of the goals or the intents of this regulation change is that during this 17-18 transition year, transition year, um, schools will be able to um, get ready using a new curricular guidance framework which we'll talk about in a little while. Okay, so just a, a second or two more on the teacher certification question. Um, who qualifies as a CTE teacher? Any teacher certified in those six CTE content areas is a CTE teacher, qualifies as a CTE teacher for the instruction of students in the middle school. Now, one of the things that gets confusing for school districts is that our teacher, the New York State Teacher Certification um, Office categorizes our CTE teachers in two different ways. Some of the CTE teachers are under the classroom title category, and some CTE teachers are under the category that's called career and technical teacher. They're all CTE teachers because they're certified in one of the six content areas, but the category of certification could be one or the other. So what's the difference? The classroom teachers are certified pre-K to 12, and their preparation for certification is an academic background. They don't have to have any work world experience in the CTE area that they're teaching in order to qualify for their certificate. They do have to have a bachelor's degree, and they do have to um, have that bachelor's degree in the area of the certification that they are pursuing. The career and technical teachers have a different path to become certified. They have some academic background, maybe not a bachelor's degree, but some academic background in their certification area, and they must have appropriate work world experience in the field of the certification that they're pursuing. So it's two different ways that those teachers become qualified for this instruction. So if we think about our six CTE content areas, this is how that kind of plays out in the, in the certification system. For technology education, all of those teachers are certified pre-K-12 under the classroom category, their classroom title. All of them have academic background 
none of them have to show work world experience in order to earn their certificate. In agriculture, in business education, and in family and consumer sciences, we have some teachers who are certified pre-K-12 classroom titles and some that are certified on the career and technical side. So what's the difference? Well, the pre-K-12 classroom titles have a broader base academic background than the CTE titles. Now, I'll do an example using family and consumer sciences because that's you know what I kind of know best. Um, family and consumer sciences as a field has three different learning strands, foods and nutrition, textiles and design, human services and family studies. So the teachers who have the pre-K-12 classroom titles have um, preparation and content knowledge in all three of those strands and can teach students from pre-K students to seniors in high school, any setting, any of those three learning strands. On the career and technical side of the house, the other category, the Family and Consumer Sciences certificates are um, specific to one of the learning strands. So for example, there's a Family and Consumer Sciences colon um, foods and nutrition, Family and Consumer Science textiles and design, or Family and Consumer Sciences human services, family studies. Those teachers have some academic preparation and some work world experience in the strand that is um, the title of their certificate. And they're able to teach students only the content for that part of family and consumer sciences that their certificate covers. In trade and technical and in health sciences, all of those teachers have certificates that are on the career and technical category, that side of the house. Um, CTE titles, um, those teachers are able to teach students in grades seven through 12. So we remember we were talking about middle school, right? So if a school has made the decision to um, begin instruction in CTE in grade five or six, then, then teachers who hold CTE title certificates would not be appropriately certified for that instruction. Likewise, if the school wanted to offer a broad-based look at career and technical education or a broader look at CTE, then a teacher who has a, a career and technical title, remember those are more specific um, to a particular content area, those teachers would be um, probably not the teachers that those schools would, would decide to hire. We do know, though, that there are many schools, particularly comprehensive high schools the big, in, in our big five cities, where there's an academy model. And in the academy models, um, many of those schools would like to start their students in grade seven headed down a particular um, path. For example, if it's a health careers academy, then they want to start their seventh graders looking at the health sciences um, field right away. So in those settings, you could see the career and technical title would be the appropriate title for that instruction in middle school. This regulation change allows for that broad uh, uh, possibilities for instruction in middle level CTE. So that's really kind of cool. Um, I did um, include on the slide the link to um, the certification information at the State Education Department. So if you wanted to take a look at those broad categories and the qualifications for teachers in, in each of those kinds of title areas, um, if you go to that link, you would be able to go through the drop-down menu and see the differences in the kinds of preparation and work experience that teachers would need to be certified in those areas. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to talk about um, the curricular guidance project that's being worked on now um, so that when schools, so that when all schools are able to implement this regulation change beginning in the 17, in the 18, not, sorry, in the 18, 19 school year, they'll all have a, a piece of curriculum that they can use um, to transition to, you know, to the, to the new regulation. 
Um, we're calling this project Introduction to CTE. Um, it's being developed as a partnership between the State Education Department, the Technical Assistance Center, and the professional organizations in career and technical education. The State Education Department um, has um, promised to do two things for this partnership. One, um, to help people be aware of the regulation change. And two, um, when the curricular guidance project is completed, they will post it as the official state curriculum for middle level CTE. And this is really important because it's, it's um, not just something that, you know, is kind of like a suggestion. It is going to be um, what is promoted by the, the education department as what middle level CTE should look like if you want to bring the intent of the regulation change, you know, to life. The Technical Assistance Center is working on the coordination of the project, and that's really kind of my role there. Um, the development of the uh, curricular guidance, which we'll look at in a second, and also outreach to the field, which we're doing a little outreach right now, help people understand the regulation change and what will be available to them um, moving forward. And then the professional organizations in career and technical education are providing the expertise for the development of the project. Um, they're providing the writers. They will be a part of the vetting process to get the uh, guidance material in the best shape possible for posting. And um, they will be providing professional development, um, you know, as we go along um, in the process and as we complete the, gui the guidance project so that schools know what's there and how they might use it. So these are the goals of the Introduction to CTE uh, Curricular Guidance Project. Um, produce a framework, okay, and we'll talk about what a framework means in a second. We're gonna try to bridge middle level CTE to high school CTE, so that that, remember, the, the middle level span of our continuum is strengthened and is connected to the next place that the student will go. Um, we will provide materials or prepare materials that have the potential to expose students to all CTE content areas. Um, we will um, be helping students to um, understand the flexibility that they have in delivery. Um, this will be modular format, so schools will be able to decide how they want to use the module. Um, and also foster acceleration in graduation pathways. I'm sure most of you know there are um, Pathways to graduation now, the student has to choose a pathway, and three of them are reliant on CTE instruction. The Career and Technical Education Pathway, the Career Development Occupational Studies uh, Graduation Pathway, and also credential for students who um, may not meet the graduation requirements, and the STEM Pathway. So these are big goals for one piece of curriculum, but all of these things are guiding the work that's being done. Okay, so what, what will this curricular guidance look like? First thing I need to tell you is that State Ed has approved the curriculum design um, for this project. So um, even if we, as we go along, find that there are some things that are a little challenging for us to develop using this framework, this is the expected framework for the product that we will deliver to State Ed and that they have agreed to post on their site. So what we have, sort of what we have at this point. So basically, we're working on a set of two modules that will then be supported by content modules. So let's think about the themes for a second. The six themes that you see across um, the slide across the slide right now are the ones that are already being worked on. One is career and community opportunities. Second is financial and consumer literacy. We have health, safety, and wellness, communication, sustainability, and finally, research, design, and innovation. The themes are the foundations for a CTE content across each of those areas, content areas. The, the standards that will be a part of the theme modules are the standards that we would hope all middle level students um, would be working to attain um, as you know, 
skills and abilities as they move forward. And if they move forward into a CTE path in high school, that's great because these foundations will um, make the next of their um, development in CTE that much better and easier because they have these foundations. But regardless of the path that a student may take, having skills in these particular six areas, these 16 areas, will make them more successful um, as students, regardless of the path they choose. That's kind of the concept behind these. Um, characteristics of theme modules, they're foundational, as I said. They're cross-content. The themes are being developed so that any CTE teacher with any of the preparation that we talked about earlier would feel confident in presenting um, lessons that would help students to attain these foundational uh, standards. So they're not specific to a particular um, content area in CTE. They're kind of the stuff that all of us as CTE teachers own and hope our students will excel in as they go forward. Um, Standards-based, you know, all curricular guidance in New York State is standards-based. Um, not only the New York State Career Development Occupational Studies Standards, you know, they're still there, one, two, and three, um, but also um, we're using the National Common Career Technical Core Standards, particularly the ones that are the career readiness standards, perfect for middle school learners, um, as the base for these themes. They're being developed in a module format. As you can see, there's six different modules um, and will be supported by content. Um, we've had already um, a group of CTE teachers from across the six content areas meet. They're called the theme team. Um, and they are working on the development of the themes um, as we, you know, as we speak. They uh, had a conference call last Friday to talk about their progress. Um, and the drafts of the theme modules um, are due to be completed by December 8th. So that's kind of cool stuff. The themes are great, but you have to have some content to support them. Like the idea of communication and communication standards is wonderful, but you have to have some, some content, some stuff to talk about. Um, so, in addition to the theme modules, um, we're going to um, develop a set of content modules for each of the six CTE content areas. Um, these modules are being developed by field-specific groups. So for example, um, any of the uh, content modules that will be for the use um, of agriculture teachers will be developed by agriculture teachers. Likewise, for business, for family and consumer sciences, health sciences, technology, and trade and technical. Um, I included a couple of examples under family and consumer sciences. Um, as I said, this project, um, you know, a few, a couple of years ago, started as a, as a way to update what was happening in home and career skills. So the family and consumer sciences people um, had a little bit of this content work done prior to this curricular framework um, model being accepted by state ed. So we have something that we can build from um, that other uh, content areas can take a look at as examples, and that probably will change quite a lot before um, you know the final piece is done. But I gave you just a couple of examples here. Remember I said in family and consumer sciences, there are three main learning strands, foods, textiles, and human services. So the family and consumer sciences field in their content specific group decided that they're going to do content modules for each of those strands. So the food one, global food access and security, they're, they're also doing another, they're doing two in food, two in textiles, and two in human services. So these are just examples to show the kind of direction that each of the CTE content areas um, may take as they develop their content for the middle school. Um, like the theme modules, they'll be standards-based, and we're using not only the New York State learning standards, but also 
the national learning standards in each of the CTE areas to help us have a little um, stronger point toward content. Then our state standards are very comprehensive. We need things a little more pointed. The national standards help out with that. Um, as I said, specific to each CTE content area, developed by teachers representing each content area. Um, they will be the context for the instruction in the themes. They'll connect middle level to high school instruction in those content areas, and they'll be developed for instruction by teachers certified for that content. Remember we said, you know, teachers in, under the, any teacher certified under that broad CTE umbrella as a potential teacher for middle school. Um, introduction to CTE, but they can only teach from the lens of their certification and their experience, right? Remember, we don't want the, you know, health sciences teacher trying to teach um, using tech ed machines unless we want to have bandaging going on. So what we need is content that's appropriate for the health sciences teacher that helps the health sciences teacher bring students to the standards of the themes through their lens and that's appropriate for the middle level learner. And that's what we're trying to accomplish with this framework. Each of the uh, modules is being developed using the same template, which will make this material easier for teachers and schools to use um, once it is completed. Um, and this, this slide just shows a screenshot of, you know, what the first page of the um, template looks like. So each of the themes and content modules will have a title, obviously. Um, they will have an essential question um, that will help frame what the module is about. They'll have module content, um, and that's going to be kind of an expanded um, outline form, not in objective format, but expanded outline, so that any teacher in CTE, regardless, and for the themes particularly, regardless of their, their um, content area, will be able to look at that um, outline and know what the intent of the module is. Um, each of them will be aligned with the standards, as I said. Um, so there'll be a standard section. We're not going to shoehorn any of the standards, and we're only going to include the standards that are most appropriate for that particular module. Um, we're also going to have an, acti uh, an activity section so there'll be a thought about what this might look like in a particular school. So I show you this just so that you know everybody that's working on the writing of this curriculum is using the same template. And in the end, teachers who want to use it, schools that want to use it, will have an easy way to access the material because it will, you know, be consistent. So this is what um, the curricular framework looks like when you put it all together in one place. You see the themes are across the top, the foundations, this is what we're all trying to accomplish with our middle level learners, supported by the content, and you see the our field names are down the left side of the slide, but there will be content modules for each of those um, particular CTE content areas. And then the center of the slide where it says meaningful middle level CTE learning experiences, this is the actual curriculum that happens within the schools. So the project is the development of these themes and these content modules that are the framework for schools' decisions about how they want that to look within their particular setting. What's going to happen with their fifth and sixth graders? What might happen with their seventh and eighth graders? What who are the teachers that we have to deliver this instruction, and how does that impact the kinds of um, instruction the students will have in CTE at middle school? So the themes are the unifying factor across all 700 school districts in New York State. The content is the way that teachers of different CTE um, certification areas can access those themes, and what happens in their classrooms is a school decision. It's the right and the responsibility of the school to decide the actual day-to-day -day curriculum. Now, starting next summer and beyond, we're probably, not probably, we are going to be working on some exemplars that show the cross between content and theme in each of the particular areas. But for the purposes of this project and the 
deadline, which I haven't told you about, but will in a minute, and the deadline we're working for at the end of this school year, it will be the set of theme modules and the set of content modules ready for school with a template for how to um, make this cross between the two. This is very cool. I think it's very cool. Hope you do too. So here are some decisions. And this is the primary one. With that framework in mind, how can schools design project-based learning experiences? Remember, this is CTE, so it's the academic brought to life to the technical subjects in a project-based arena, right? So project-based learning experiences that will help middle school students gain foundational CTE knowledge, those are our themes, through the lens of the CTE content areas that they have represented. And that's, you know, the choice of the teacher or the teachers that you have in place already in the school districts um, that will determine the lens that the students will have. So, curriculum decisions, um, big. Once people understand the framework, these are the decisions that have to happen with it at the school level. There's also decisions about delivery. Um, remember we said one of the things that um, those school superintendents who brought the issue about the prior regulation to the board and to the commissioner, one of the things they were concerned about was um, the actual um, fitting into the master schedule of the um, CTE time, the one and three fourths unit. So the module delivery gives them a little bit of flexibility but what would that look like, or what could that look like in their particular master schedule? Again, school decision. So one of the decisions that could be made that's well within the um, current regulation is that they keep the current delivery model. The one unit of tech ed, the three-fourths unit of home and career skills, that is um, compliant with the new regulation language. So that's a decision that could be made. In schools where things are going really well, um, tech ed is great, home and career skills is great, they want to keep going on that trajectory of greatness, they can do so. They might use the new curricular guidance to um, inform the direction of new lessons for what's going on in those two content areas, but those two content areas meet the regulations. Some schools may um, focus on intermediate learning standards, that's the second column, middle, of, I know this slide's very dense, so just you know, don't worry if you can't read, you can look at it, you know, in detail at another time. But um, another choice could be sample middle level CTE only, where the focus is on the intermediate learning standards, um, this, you know, presenting um, middle level CTE at a, um, at a, in projects that are appropriate for our, our you know, 10 to 14 year olds, um, that would be another um, choice of delivery. Some schools may want to um, look at the acceleration potential. Um, Commissioner's Regulation 100.4 allows for acceleration in career and technical education. We don't have a lot of examples of that in New York State at this point, um, but with this regulation change, we may see more schools taking advantage of, of that. Um, one possibility would be to accelerate students in uh, careers in Financial Management, CFM. That is a uh, required um, piece of, of instruction for um, the CTE uh, graduation pathway. And so there may be schools that would want to have students leave middle school with their CFM requirement, you know, already taken care of and in their pocket. So that would be acceleration into a foundational um, CTE high school requirement. Other schools might decide that they would like to accelerate some of their students in a more focused way. Remember, we talked about that academy model. Um, very possible that schools um, who use academy models would like to um, have part of the high school requirement for their um, CTE pathway accomplished while those students are in grade eight. And acceleration can only happen in grade eight according to regulation. So some eighth graders may be um, looking at a more specific um, content piece course um, as eighth graders that will then springboard them into um, the pathway that they are intending in high school. So 
in addition to deciding what's going to happen in the classroom, the curriculum decision, there's also a decision the schools need to make about how they want to position their one and three fourths unit of CTE at the middle school um, to accomplish the goals that the district has for its students. Okay, so, so how can people participate in this project? Well, the steps that we are doing that need to be done are on the left-hand side of the slide. Um, first thing, complete the drafts of the theme modules. And I told you that the, the initial uh, draft that will be ready for the field to take a look at and vet um, are due from the theme team on December 8th. They're making phenomenal project, progress on those six themes. I'm really excited to see how well the template is working for them. That Remember, there's a template for their writing. Um, they are working in a Dropbox format, so um, they're populating each other's um, templates as well. So it's a great collaboration of the theme team. Um, and so we'll have something from them by December 8th, um, which then we'll need people from the field to take a look at with fresh eyes. Um, development of the content modules for each of the CTE content areas. Um, a content team is meeting for the first time on December 13th. Um, several representatives from each of the CTE content areas um, will be coming into a big meeting in Albany well, where we'll talk about the project, we'll take a look at the template, and begin to work on um, decisions for what those content modules will look like for each CTE content area. Um, at that meeting, we'll also make a decision about um, when the drafts will be ready for, you know, will be due, will be ready for the content modules. Um, sometime in, you know, very early spring would be my guess, um, so that then those would be ready for fresh eyes as well. Each of the um, CTE content area professional organizations um, and the group as a whole are looking at professional development for this new piece for middle school um, and like to, um, you know, alert everyone that um, in June in Syracuse, there'll be a joint CTE conference. There was one a couple of years ago and this will be the, the second one. Um, and the joint CTE conference is our due date for the curriculum framework. All the themes, all the content modules, ready for people to see and to learn about, um, ready for posting on the SED website by the joint CTE conference. That is the due date we've set for ourselves so that um, those materials will be ready for summer work and people will be able to start to, you know, implement the change that was intended by the regulation um, beginning in the 18-19 school year. And then, of course, outreach to the broader educational community. Um, we've, we've done a lot of outreach to our CTE colleagues and doing as much outreach to the rest of the school community as possible. But this is um, a place where, you know, everybody can be, <laughs> can be helpful in letting their school leaders know um, that there has been this regulation change if they're not aware of it and that there, there will be a guidance project um, guidance materials available for schools to use, um, you know, by the end of this school year. So if you're interested in volunteering as a content um, um, editor for either the theme or the content modules, be wonderful to have some fresh eyes on this project. Um, as we move into the later spring and into next summer, um, we are wanting to collect some of those exemplar learning experiences that show um, the potential for um, instruction of the themes through the lens of the content in a particular school. You know, that part that's the actual curriculum, we need some exemplars that we'll be able to show that will help schools to envision what this kind of um, change can look like in their school. So late spring, early summer, and through next summer, we'll be working with the field to develop those models and collect those models. So if you already have in your head some really great things that you're doing in your school that are project-based and along the lines of the themes combined with content, you, you know, we could, we could use your exemplar. 
Um, hope everyone will participate in the joint CTE conference in Syracuse. That would be great um, because that'll be the place where, you know, the, we're going to call it finished draft will be um, shared. And then, of course, you know, encourage your school leaders, your school administrators to, um, you know, go to the joint CTE conference or to, um, you could also share this information with them. This will be on the archive. So, you know, it's a way for them to learn about what's going on with this middle level regulation change. Okay, so um, I think we're gonna have time now for some questions if people have them, um, but also you have my contact information. Um, so if you would like to be a person who vets um, some of the work that's being done by these writing teams, or if you wanna volunteer to work on an exemplar, um, or if you have a general question, you know, what does this mean? Could this happen? Could that happen? Um, you know, I'm available to you through email, um, and you have my email address there. So, okay, so we don't have any questions at this time. Um, let's give the attendees about a minute or two, and we can see if anything comes in. Okay. All right, well, it doesn't look like there's any questions, Don. So on behalf of the Technical Assistance Center, thank you to our attendees for joining us today. And as a reminder, this presentation was recorded and will be posted on nyctecenter.org. Thank you.